Alfred Bader's Path to Queens began in Vienna in 1938. An Austrian Jew of Czech descent, he fled when he was 14 years old, escaping to England. In 1940, he was deported to Canada, where he was detained in an internment camp in southern Quebec. Alfred gained his release from the camp and began his studies at Queen's on November 15, 1941, in the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. As a Queen's student, I admire his generosity, donating something from a castle to Rembrandt artwork. Uh, it's pretty incredible. As a chemist, uh, I admire that he started the largest chemical company from his garage, and I think uh, that's just amazing, so I admire that about him. An astute entrepreneur, Alfred built his fortune through the chemistry industry. He worked as a research chemist with a paint company in Pittsburgh, soon after completing a PhD at Harvard. At the same time, he co-founded Aldrich Chemical Company, which specialized in supplying reliable chemicals for research purposes. The company grew to be an industry leader. One of the results of, uh, of his work in creating this company is that, uh, is that researchers all over the world, including those at Queen's, uh, use the products and find chemicals from uh, the company that he created, and these are used in chemistry labs and engineering labs. They're used in biochemistry, they're used in medical research. And so the impact, the insight that he had has, has influenced uh, uh, scientific discovery across the world. As a proud Queen's alumnus, Alfred wanted to give young people access to the Queen's experience that was so influential in his life. To that end, he, along with his wife Isabel, established numerous awards to support students, donated Hurst-Monsoo Castle to the university, which would become the Bader International Study Center, and trusted the Agnes Etherington Art Center with nearly 200 paintings from the Baroque era, including three Rembrandts, and provided a transformative gift to create the Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts. Alfred Bader first um, fell in love with um, art and the idea of collecting art when he was doing his graduate studies. He was studying chemistry, but he took an art history course. In 1960s, he first gave a work of art to the Agnes Etherington Art Center, and his collection built dramatically over the following decades, as did his commitment to Queen's University. Alfred came by one evening to give a lecture to the uh, students, and he was carrying a plastic shopping bag, a, a Tesco bag. It was a lecture on Rembrandt, and said, I don't suppose many of you have had one of these in your hands. And he took out a Rembrandt, a Rembrandt, <laughs> an 11 by 13 uh, Rembrandt. And if you look at Dr. Bader himself, he was a change agent. He had such a tragic beginning to his life, but what he decided to do was to invest in transformative projects that would affect young people and the community for the rest of their lives. And that's what he has done. I got a full scholarship from Dr. Alfred Bader. Without him, I wouldn't be in university, let alone this prestigious school, so he is like the provider of my future. There are a lot of things to admire about Alfred Bader, uh, one of which is obviously his great success as a Queen's alumnus. Secondly, his great generosity to the University, of course. But I think he is a man who has been very, very little spoiled by success. And getting to know him, you see and hear and learn from somebody who has learned a lot of life lessons, is not shy about imparting them, but is also very, very grateful for the things that have happened to him in life, and particularly kindnesses shown to him. And that has driven him to pay it forward, so to speak, not least to his alma mater, Queens. <laughs>